The Delicate Flower Quest can be the most infuriating quest in Hollow Knight, but it is the only way to get most people's final mass shard. I'm Horizon Shield, let's make this easy. Start by finding the Grey Mourner over in the resting grounds. She is in a hidden area behind several breakable walls. Watch out for the enemies in the area as they patrol, as they do two damage down here, as so kindly shown by me. <clears throat> Anyways, this area actually has several secrets, so feel free to explore it to your heart's content when you want. Making our way up, you'll notice a hut with a bench next to it. You are welcome to sit at the bench if you are afraid of messing up the quest. You can also use a dream gate to get back here easier if you'd like. If you do decide to sit at the bench, you will respawn all the enemies on the map. A simple trick to do this quest is if you kill all the enemies on your route and don't sit at the bench, they don't respawn and it makes the trip very simple. However, I like to put myself at a major disadvantage and keep all the enemies alive while doing this quest. Inside the hut, talk to the Grey Mourner to receive the delicate flower. She gives you the task of putting this flower on a grave over in the Queen's Garden. It is a delicate flower, so you are not allowed to use the trams, dream gates, and you cannot take any damage. The last one makes the route hard. If you do lose the flower at any point, go back to the Grey Mourner to receive a new one. So on to the route, the real reason you're here. My proposed route is down to the City of Tears, through the Fungal Waste, and into the Queen's Garden. In my opinion, this is the easiest route. By the time you reach this quest, the Forgotten Crossroads are full of enemies that are tanky, they explode, and are in general not just worth dealing with ever at all for any reason. And there is no good exit that puts you at an easier area of the map. If you wanted to, you can take the flower down through Deep Nest, but I'm not a masochist so have fun with that one if you do try it. Let me know down in the comments if you actually did it that way. There is one breakable wall that you need to clear before you are able to use this route. It is the one leading from the Queen's Garden to the room with the Moss Prophet. I will point this out when we pass by it so you know which room to look for. So as we run into the first enemies we fight, I need to start pointing out our charm setups. There are a lot of different things you can do, such as a summon build, a pure spell build, or a defensive build, I guess is a thing. Or, but if you just want to play like that, just go for it. I'm not going to judge you. That part is up to you. I would suggest having at least Shaman Stone for the spell damage, and then whatever else you plan on using and that you're comfortable with, killing enemies from distance or up close, just make sure you don't get hit. Many of these enemies are killed in one hit through a simple spell, that's why I suggest the Shaman Stone. You can use a Shade Soul or a Descending Dark to clear the majority of the enemies that you're going to be encountering. You don't have to kill any enemies that you feel comfortable just jumping over. I would rather be safe than sorry, and take most of them out, since these guys in particular are in closed corridors. And look at that, at this point I only have to kill two more enemies to finish the entire route. The biggest problem with the Delicate Flower Quest is good planning. It is the area most people mess up, as they don't know the best way to get from one area to the next after having unlocked most of their upgrades. One in particular is the route that we're going to be using, and it's going from the City of Tears over to Fungal Waste as it requires the ground pound to open it. Most people aren't exploring back this way, so they tend to miss it. So, here's probably the biggest tip I have for you. Use it. These hallways can be pretty tight, so if you really want to start killing enemies here, go for it. Just stay safe and try not to get hit. Remember, if you are struggling at any point going through the City of Tears or any other part of the map without getting hit, you can always just clear the route and do the entire quest without sitting on a bench. It may feel a little cheap, but hey, what's more important? Your calm and serene life with a new mass shard, or the angered and more attempts at wasting your life trying to deliver this flower across the entire map for no good reason. And just a side note, when you are trying to pass by enemies, make sure you're trying to go as quickly as you can if you don't plan on stopping and killing them. The longer you stay aggroed, the more likely they are to try and attack you. Obviously, when you're trying not to get hit, getting attacked is a major downside. This is another reason we go through the fungal waste, as the enemies here don't really aggro, and the biggest threat that they pose for the most part is by running into them as you go by. Since you've made your way over to the Queen's Garden before, to unlock the route we are going to be using, I'm going to assume that you have the upgrades that you need in Isma's Tier, Monarch Wings, Shaded Cloak, the whole shebang. 
and I don't need to waste time in explaining that you are going to be needing these at some point to make your life easier. We make our way back over to the fungal wastes, and we are going to be immediately going down and then left. If you've explored the map, you'll notice a portion of the fungal waste that intersects with Deep Nest and Queen's Garden. That's our target. If you don't know the map like the back of your hand, I end up pulling up the map here so I don't confuse myself, and it'll confuse you even better. At this point, we are nearly at the Queen's Gardens. It's almost time to face our biggest obstacles in the flower quest. No, I'm not talking about the random platformers falling out from under you. I'm wanting to talk about the Flying Mantis enemies. One of the reasons that I suggest that you use the Shaman Stone in this guide is that it makes killing them far easier if you have it. There should only be one in our way that you're going to have to kill, or that I would strongly suggest, I should say. Use a Shade Soul and then a single Nail Swing to kill it. This works for any of them. There are a total of three in the rooms we are going to be passing by. Kill all of them if you want, or like me, you can try to run past them. But remember to dodge before you do your attacks, otherwise they might throw a blade in your face and you're gonna have to start all over. I kill this one as it's given me trouble in the past by throwing its blade at me as I've run around it. A nasty way to have to restart the run. And as I've said before, try to move quickly in the next room, otherwise you're gonna have to deal with both Mantis, and they are probably the most difficult enemies in the route, or any route. They're just a pain in general, and you're going to have to face them on almost any way you take to get here. As you get past them, it's time to finish this thing. Remember that you can look down and be sure that you aren't going to be falling on any of the bugs, and that you're not going to fall into the spikes. As you walk into the final room, you're going to start feeling a little bit anxious because of the thorns. Take a deep breath. It's not that bad. The first gap you don't even need to jump for if you don't want to. Just go up to the very edge and stop. Hit the dash button, and you can make it that way. But I don't like risking it at this point, so I do a super tiny jump, and then dash. Then it's just a matter of falling with style to finally have completed the delicate flower quest. Just make sure you time it right, otherwise this got real awkward. Make your way back to the Grey Mourner any way you want. I prefer using this stag station right below the finish of the quest, and take it to the resting grounds. Talk to her, and she will finally give you the hardest mass shard to get in the game. Hopefully this completes your final shard for the end game. If this was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, happy hunting.